Welcome to the Therapy Show Podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Mustard. In each episode, I interview a seasoned and knowledgeable talk therapist from the counseling world to glean valuable insights, techniques, and tools that you can apply to your practice and your life. And if you're considering a career in the counseling field or just want to hear about what it's like to be a talk therapist, then this is the podcast for you. In this episode, we dive into the fascinating world of matchmaking and dating coaching with my special guest, Melissa Rogers. Melissa brings a wealth of experience as a professional matchmaker and dating coach, offering insights into the dynamics of finding love and building meaningful relationships in today's world. Throughout our conversation, Melissa shares her journey to discovering her true calling as a matchmaker. She discusses the importance of empathy, understanding, and personal growth in her role, and how her background in psychology and human sexuality has equipped her to navigate the complex landscape of modern dating. You will get a behind-the-scenes look at what it's like to be a matchmaker, the process of working with clients, and the challenges and rewards of helping singles find their perfect match. Melissa also offers valuable advice for single parents navigating the dating scene, emphasizing the importance of communication, honesty, and setting clear expectations. Whether you're single and searching, a single parent looking to re-enter the dating world, or simply fascinated by the art of matchmaking, this episode is packed with insightful discussions, practical tips, and inspiring stories. So join us as we explore the power of connection, the art of matchmaking, and the journey to finding love with Melissa Rogers. But before we hear from Melissa, I am so excited to extend a very special offer to you. You can now access my collection of guided meditations and hypnosis sessions at no cost. That's right. They are free. These powerful tools are designed to positively influence your mind and body, promoting profound shifts in your perception, emotions, and overall well-being. By harnessing the power of focused attention and deep relaxation, both meditation and hypnosis can transform your mental and physical states. Currently, my library includes sessions on weight management, achieving success, and alleviating anxiety. And to access these transformative resources, simply click the link in the show notes. I'm also in the process of expanding my offerings to include more topics like fostering healthy relationships and building your confidence. Don't miss out. Click the link in the show notes to start your journey today. Well, hey, friends, welcome back to another episode of The Therapy Show. I'm your host, Lisa Mustard, and this week's guest is Melissa Rogers. Welcome to the show, Melissa. It is so great to have you. Hi, Lisa. It's so good to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, yeah. I'm really excited for our listeners to hear from you today. Melissa is a matchmaker and a dating coach, and she has a lot of experience in this world. So before we dive into the topic, would you share with our listeners a little bit about who you are, what you do, and how you help people? I would love to. So as she mentioned, my name is Melissa Rogers. I am a professional real life matchmaker. I know a lot of people don't think this job actually exists, but here I am living proof. Um, You know, I studied psychology way back in the day, and I knew that my calling in life was something to do with the fact that I am an undying empath. You know, I can feel the emotions of anyone around me, but I also got really good at adapting to emotions and understanding kind of how to help other people navigate them through lots of study, mind you, in lots of personal study, Um, huge fan of therapy. And um, so when it, I started out working actually with adults with personality disorders. So think um, very severe schizophrenia, bipolar, dissociative personality disorder, things like that. And that part of my little tender empathic heart, oh boy, it got stomped on a lot. So it was exhausting, but um, I knew that I was meant to serve in that function, right? And so I had to figure out how can I still do this in a way that feels organic to me? And part of my studies, when I studied psychology, I had an emphasis on human sexuality. Because again, you know, sex is something that is so huge and relationships and dating. It's like the main driving force of who we are in life. And um, it's not studied enough, or it wasn't studied enough or it wasn't talked about enough, especially my gosh, I don't want to age myself, but like 20 years ago when I was in college, I was embarrassed my freshman year, like signing up for human sexuality, but I was thrilled and so excited. 
Um, so yeah, and you notice the more you talk about it, the more people are fascinated with it and you realize there is such a huge avenue here. So anyway, I fast forward, um, I was looking for a career change and I was looking for jobs where you could work remotely. And I saw a listing for a matchmaker. And my first thought was, well, this has got to be fake. They're going to steal my identity, but let's try it anyway. So (laughs) my identity was not stolen. It was a a very interesting interview process, like three interviews and like, you know, a bonus interview. And so it was legit. And so here I am. (laughs) I love it. I love it. And I love that you and I connected initially on Facebook somehow. I don't even know how we got connected, but I just love what you share and you just have such um, a wonderful way of sharing, helping singles and, you know, getting them connected. And then your sense of humor, I just absolutely love it. So every time you post, (laughs) I'm always like, Oh, I love what Melissa shares. So the, um, so that's what you do now. How long have you been doing that? It's been about 10 years now. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's gotten better and better. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what is the, what is it like to be a matchmaker? Like, I mean, can you, can you walk me through what your day looks like? Or I don't even know where to start with that, but I'm curious, like how people come in, right. how do you talk to them? Like the process. So I work for an incredible company. We operate nationwide. It's called three day rule. And I will get clients assigned to me from our lovely team. And I meet my clients via zoom just like this. If we can meet in person, of course we do that. But I love to have conversations about who you are at the cellular level. I want to know what you're binge watching on TV. I want to know the last book you read. I ask about what personal development you do. And from there, we kind of create a game plan, right? We talk about the top priorities that you must have in a partner. We talk about the things that, you know, you know, are not going to work for you, those deal breakers, those hard lines, and everything in between, you know, we definitely break down must haves, like to haves, cannot have. And I think a big part of my job is to remind people we need to come from this place of curiosity and this place of being open. So I do tell my clients, I'm very transparent. When I see a roadblock or a potential arena where we're not going to be successful, it is my job to not tell you what you want to hear, but tell you what my professional bones are you know, telling me to let you know about. Um, And yeah, so we have an incredible database, literally so huge. But additionally, um, one thing that's great about, you know, my company is we don't demand the quote money to money matches, right? So if I'm being paid by a client to, you know, they're outsourcing me to be their boots on the ground, I can find their match anywhere. So Mm -hmm. Maybe like I can find somebody on Facebook, I can find somebody on LinkedIn, I can find somebody at the coffee shop down the street, which I've actually done before, which is funny. Um, But yeah, so that's the great thing is not only do I have this huge database, but I can find matches anywhere. So it, it encourages me to be able to have conversations with anyone and everyone. And along the way, what's cool is these single people who are in my database who I, you know, maybe have this incredible connection with, and I know they're going to be great to match. They might not be good for client number one, but you know, a year later, if they're still single, I'll be like, I have this new client. He seems amazing for you. Are you still single? Do you want to talk about it? Nice. Oh, that's cool. I love how you can just be be out and about and come across somebody. And if you think that they're a good fit, <laughs> that's you can only imagine what that conversation is like at the coffee shop. You're like, by the way, I'm a matchmaker. Are you free? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I had to learn, right? Like we all have to figure out like, what is the right way to approach things? Because it used to be like, are you single? And then I'm like, I can't start by saying that, right? Especially with men. Um, so instead, I'll just be like, no, I understand. This might be the oddest thing you heard today but I'm a professional matchmaker. And if you happen to be single, I would love to get your information and keep you in mind. (laughs) Oh, wow. Are most, how do they respond to that? A lot of people are like, they they don't believe my job is real. So then I get to, (laughs) you know, I pull up my profile or I pull out my business card and I'm like, Mm -hmm. here you go. You can can verify that I am a real person. Um, But a lot of people are skeptical at first because they're they're just really not used to this. Right. Um, especially with the advent of online dating. It's like, well, why do people need you when they could go on Bumble for free? And it's like, well, we get what we pay for on Bumble. So that's why they come to me. Right. Yeah, that's a really good point. You know, when you think about all those dating apps out there, that's so true. It's like, 
you know, I, I talk to a lot of people, single people who are over it, like done with the dating apps, Mm -hmm. but they're, they're stuck because they don't know how to meet somebody. They don't know where to find someone. And a lot of the advice that, you know, is out there is, it's just hard for them to follow through on because they're busy and they're, they got their career or maybe they're single parents and they have kids. It's like, it's, it's hard to, to actually make that happen. So if you can like offer yourself a shortcut with a, uh, a matchmaker, I mean, wow. That's to me, that's awesome. Yeah. I, you know what? I understand app fatigue is real because we want to come from this place of abundance in every area of life. Like my finances, let's be abundant, you know, like happiness, abundance, wonderful friends, abundance. But on dating apps, it's swipe left. There's a new one. Swipe left. There's a new one. Swipe left. So like there's an abundance of profiles. However, it's like, are those people interested in you back? Maybe, maybe not. And so it's kind of like this false serotonin hit. And then you have to wait to see like, are they going to read the message? Because a lot of people get so tired of the apps that even though maybe two days ago, they swiped you because they thought you were an incredible match. Like they haven't checked it in two days because they're like, this thing sucks. I don't want to be on it anymore. Um, And additionally, with the advent of like TikTok therapy, there could be anybody spewing blanket advice that actually doesn't work in the industry or, you know, doesn't have a background in psychology or dating. And yet they're giving advice to, you know, hundreds of thousands of followers. And so I think that also is, you know, it can be harmful for people because they're like, well, this person said if a, if a guy wanted to, he would. It's like, okay, well, do they know the guy? Do they know? Is he shy? Has he been hurt before? Is he working? through some trauma so there are just like there's so much going into it that like app fatigue is like the tip of the iceberg and then the rest of it just builds right no I hear you on the whole TikTok TikTok therapy thing let me tell you I I encounter that a lot I'm like oh lordy where'd you learn that in 30 seconds on TikTok yeah actually I did I'm like why are you listening to this TikTok person like are they you know anyway but we could that's a whole other podcast totally next time (laughs) yeah right so I know one of the things that we wanted to talk about was um being like navigating dating as a single parent. And I know you recently were featured in Business Insider. And I think this is just so awesome. Can you can you share with our listeners, like give them some tips or ideas about how do you navigate the dating world when you are a single parent? Like how do you even, I mean, to wrap my, I, I wouldn't even know where to start with that as a, as giving advice. So what can you share w- with us? Yeah, no, I think that it's really important to remind single parents that we can't always ask people to have the same life experiences as as us. So for me, I was married for about 10 years. I have two children. I love them. They're amazing. Um, And I have split custody, which means that I have you know, certain amount of free time and it is, it, it's prized, right? It's premium. And I have incredible friends and incredible social life. So when I'm going to allocate my free time, it's got to be for a reason. Um, and I think that we just need to be very communicative. For example, if we're dating somebody who maybe doesn't have children, they have to know that listen, I don't want to put pressure on you, but this is my free time. You know, for me, I'm like, Wednesdays and weekends are my free days. I am happy to see you during those times. Other times would require a little bit more planning. Um, And I think that we just have to be over communicative on the front end so that we don't get stressed out on the back end. You know, if somebody does not have children already, every night is free to them. We don't remember that. Like if we, we don't remember what it's like to have every night free, but they do. And that's just perception is reality. And so they can only perceive what their day to day looks like in their world. Um, and so that's one thing. If somebody doesn't have kids, just be honor the fact that they haven't had to deal with your, your schedule changes. Um, and then if they do have kids, um, I would say, remember that their schedule is just as important. They're their own main character as well. And you're your own main character. So there has to be push and pull. And not everything is going to be cookie cutter at the beginning, you might have to see each other, you know, once a week, once every other week until you can iron that out. Um, And also, you don't need to be in a hurry to introduce the kids. In fact, I think that it's better to really establish a relationship without even talking about the kids that much. Like, you certainly can. You can bring them up here and there. But um, 
you hear you hear a lot of couples after they have children, for example, like our therapist told us we have to go out and not talk about the kids because that's the only thing we're bonding on these days. And that is such a powerful statement because if you're in the dating world and you're like, okay, well, this is what we have in common. We have kids. Let's talk about all the challenges of parenthood. Like, are you learning about what their love language is? Are you learning how they take their coffee? Are you paying attention to like their, their gastronomy, like on the menu, are they going to choose the filet? Are they going to go for the porterhouse? You know, um, So remember that being a parent is like one of the most important things of your entire life and it will be at the helm and your kids are still going to come first. But when you're creating a relationship, that relationship actually needs to come first when it's time for the relationship. Think about it as time blocking, really. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I really, I like that. And I was kind of reflecting on, you know, my husband and I, when we go out, are we talking about our kids still? We, I, th- I feel as though we talked about them more when they were younger. Now that they're like teenage-ish, we talk about them for sure, but it doesn't seem to be as much of a conversation, but I think that's just us evolving and knowing like we have to talk to each other about other things. Yeah. You know, it, it can, it can overtake. And the, that's amazing everything. that you do that. Cause you're right. Like, um, and there are many marriages where, you know, they'll say, I love being a parent with you and tag teaming this, but I'm not in love with you. And so that's when it comes down to like, how are you nurturing your conversation conversations? So even if it's a new relationship, or if you're married, um, whoever's listening to this, um, it's the conversation and the kind of meaty things that you can get into. And so I also recommend um, little card decks, table topics, where you can just pull it out and have a fun thing to talk about that will get you kind of out of that normal realm. Yeah. Yeah. So do you say, would you say that your caseload, I mean, what, what, what percentage would be single parents around? I'm going to say probably about 50%, sometimes more, sometimes less, Mm -hmm. but yeah, a lot of people are in this dating world, navigating it for the first time with, you know, their quote unquote dependence. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's a good way of, of putting it, man. So are there things that um, you can think of that are, you wouldn't recommend? You know, I know you, you mentioned a, a couple already, like that you wouldn't recommend um, single people with kids, you know, do on a, on a date or in the, in the process of finding a match. So one thing that I had mentioned, um, you mentioned the Business Insider article, and one piece of advice I gave is like, say you're fresh on the dating scene, um, number one, make sure you're ready for it. You know, um, if you're not ready to kind of disclose, yes, I am a parent, I'm a single parent of two, yada, yada, you know, there are people who will not put it on their profile or not be forthcoming. You know, I had somebody last week told me that he showed up for a first date with a girl and, um, you know, she had a flat tire. So he's helping her out. And then he sees a stroller in the back of her car. Um, And that wouldn't have been a deal breaker for him, but it was a red flag that she didn't mention it. So just be forthcoming coming. And if somebody doesn't like it, then they're not for you. That's easy, right? Like right, right. you would much rather find out right away. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I have no desire to date somebody with kids. And that hurts a little, right? Like that's like a little dagger to the chest, but you'd rather take a dagger to the chest before this person even matters to you than like, you know, three weeks in when you've talked every day and like really felt like you've established this emotional connection. And they're like, wait, what? Because you, t- you hiding it from them is still you lying to them and it's them being shocked and it just, it doesn't start things off well. Um, Another thing is, you know, say you're on an app or something like that. Maybe you mention your appearance. Um, I think that it's very important to respect your co-parent. I have the most incredible, amicable co-parenting friendship relationship with my ex-husband. So I know that I'm really lucky with that. Um, But I also know if he thought I was on a dating app with my two daughters faces showing he would be so uncomfortable. So always come like come prepared to know like you have to protect them and protect your co parent. So put an emoji over their face or maybe crop them out or something. Um, I think that goes a long way to show like you're being respectful to your children and your co parent. Um, And additionally, don't trash talk your co parent not not up on the front like we all have things like my best friends, 
my best friend who I would take a bullet for in like an area that wouldn't kill me probably. <laughs> but like, but you know, like right. I get mad at them sometimes. Mm. However, like I'm not going to show up and be like, oh yeah, my best friend, Lisa, oh, she annoyed me so much this morning. Like if you're not going to say it about your best friend on a first date or a second date or a third date, don't say it about your co-parent because it's going to be another red flag if you're not able to just like compartmentalize that. It doesn't mean you have to bottle it up, but this person that you're on a date with, they need to know that you can carry on and move forward with poise and respect and grace. And if they're not seeing that, they're just going to be like, okay, clearly there are some unresolved issues there and they're not going to want to step in that pile. Right. Right. No, I was just thinking that too. Like I, if I was the, on the receiving end of that and the person was just like complaining and all that about their ex and I would, I wouldn't, I would probably end the date as quickly as I could mm-hmm. just not yeah. want to see that person again. Yeah. That would be, tough. I went on a first date and he asked me, this is forever and a day ago now. Um, and he asked me about my co-parenting relationship and I was just how I was now. I was like, you know what? We are better friends now than we ever were when we were married. And we are so lucky to be able to co-parent together. And that was that because that's the truth. And that's the only extent of the truth that I owed that person at that time. And he was like, wow, I, you know, I can't stand my ex. It's nothing like that. Like she just really burned me. And I was like, oh, you know, like, okay. That might be true, but if you're trying to move forward with me, like, let me feel like the only person in the room for a little bit, and then you can trash her, you know, like trash her in your own time. And then once you get to know me and I know more about you, then you can maybe give me some more details. But on a first date, let's just, let's keep it to you and me. I want to share with you a fabulous offer from Therapy Notes. Have you ever felt swamped by endless paperwork and tangled schedules? Then step into a world of clarity with Therapy Notes. Hailed as the gold standard in electronic health records, Therapy Notes is your beacon in the dynamic realm of mental health care. With their around the clock seven day live phone support, it's evident why they shine with a dazzling 4.9 out of five stars on trustpilot.com and Google. From effortless billing to streamlined scheduling, precise note taking, and state of the art telehealth, Therapy Notes is your all in one solution. And for the prescribers out there, they're ecstatic to introduce ePrescribe. And if you're switching lanes from another EHR, they've got your back. They will seamlessly migrate your demographic data at zero cost, ensuring you hit the ground running. So become part of the 100,000 plus mental health professionals community who've chosen therapy notes. And to embark on a two-month complimentary journey, just tap the link in the show notes or use promo code LISA at checkout at therapynotes.com. That's promo code LISA, L-I-S-A, at checkout at therapynotes.com. So dive into the Therapy Notes experience today and see why it's the talk of the town. Navigate with confidence and choose the best. Right. Oh, that's such good advice. I'm so glad you you shared that example. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking about, oh, my husband will kill me for probably saying this, but when I, our first, it wasn't really a date. It was more of, we were going out as friends, but um, I kind of put my foot in my mouth in that regard. And I remember being like, so horrified. I was like, he's never going to want to hang out with me again, but thankfully he overlooked it. And here we are today. We're married, but I remember doing something similar to that. And I just felt horrible afterwards. Um, in the moment it felt good, but afterwards I was like, oh, what is he going to think of me for, you know, I'm trying to get to know him. And I just said that. And it was, I felt so bad and awkward, but he, he was able to, to move past that. Thankfully, although he did bring it up years later and tell, and tell me like, yeah, that was kind of weird, but so of the doubt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So just, you know, word to the wise, I know, you I, know I totally what? get it. I was just going to say that actually hammers home some advice that I tell myself, right? Mm -hmm. I tell myself this every single day of my life, especially when something's going really well. I say, if it's for you, you can't mess it up. And if it's not for you, you can't fix it. So that's a perfect example, Lisa. He was for you, so you couldn't mess it up. Um, But still, you know, it moving forward for people. (laughs) Try not to. (laughs) Well, I, yeah. And thank you for saying that. And I, I appreciate that. Yeah. So he is for me. So, (laughs) so tell us more about, um, what about things that you see, uh, folks doing correctly or doing right on, on dating as single parents? What do you, what do you see out there? That's awesome. And you're like high five and your client afterwards. 
Yeah. You know what? So I have a client who is a single mom. She has a two-year-old and before her date, she was like, do you have time? Can we just connect really quick? And so we got on the phone and she actually wanted to have the conversation of like, Hey, my ex and I are completely amicable as you know. And, you know, I'm going to mention him because, you know, if it goes somewhere, like he is a part of my life and, you know, I want to make sure that my date knows that if he hears his name mentioned, there's no chance of us getting back together. There will be no rekindling, but we are a family. And um, I told her, I was like, that's incredible. That's the greenest of green flags. And he already knows you're a parent. So I think that, again, I think that's appropriate to say, because right away, just be communicative and you can get it out of the way, right? Just, you know, they can ask about what your co-parenting situation is and just say it exactly like that. We're fabulous co-parents. I wish nothing but the best for him. And I'm a big supporter of him and he is around on special occasions, but he's not the one for me. And I really want to focus on you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That sounds, that sounds great. I mean, I love that she was so forthcoming and she was so, Mm -hmm. you know, she really got it. She was really, um, she realized like how important that was. So very cool. Love that. Yeah. Very, very cool. So um, is there anything else that you want to share about the the topic so far? I just want to make sure I cover everything. You know, there are so many things to cover. There's no way we can cover it all, but I feel like we we did a good job. I think, you know, another thing I just want to remind single parents is it's not a detriment. It's not, it shouldn't hold you back because you have this capacity for love that you probably didn't know before you were a parent, right? And also like you're, you're going to roll with punches a lot more easily. Um, you will show up to a restaurant and I can imagine, you know, if I was on a first date before being a parent, a waiter spills like red wine or something on the table, it gets on my dress. I would be like, oh my God, this dress was so expensive. I can't believe I just got <laughs> spilled on. Oh my God. And now as a parent, I'm like, oh that'll buff out, you know, yeah. like I'll, I'll, I'll put some OxyClean on it when I get home. So I think like when you're a single parent, just remember it can be um, a real positive because you know how to pick your battles, you know, which hills to die on. And it's not going to be red wine spilled on my skirt because how many times do we have to deal with mm-hmm. foreign sticky spills somewhere on our clothes or in our house. And we just realize the thing that's so much more important is the connections that we have. And it's not necessarily going to be that little mess in the hallway or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I really, I can attest to that. The the whole <laughs> thing before children, how different your world is. And yeah, as a, as a, as a parent, you just roll with it and you're like, oh, mm, that'll come out. We'll figure it out later. Yeah. 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 Don't worry about it. It's part of, part of it. So totally. um, I know one of the things that I wanted to touch on also was your career. And I know a lot of my therapist colleagues, some of them are curious about, you know, other things they can do with their skill set. And you mentioned um, you being a coach, uh, a dating coach. Is that so how does that work with with your company or um, do you do the coaching? Or are you just a matchmaker? Like, how does that all how does that work? Because I know some people out there are, are their ears are picking up. and They're like, hmm, I might be interested in doing this. Yeah. I think there's a huge area of opportunity with date and relationship coaching, especially from therapists. Mm -hmm. In fact, I work with um, one coach very closely. Her name is Becca. Shout out Becca Cohen. Um, I'm sorry, Becca Klein. So rude. Um, (laughs) Anyway, um, and she was a therapist for years. And it's like, I can tell like how well, or what a great grasp she has on working with date coaching clients. She's also been in the matchmaking realm and whatnot. Um, So for me, when I have my clients, I work with them their entire package. So I do my fair share of date and relationship coaching with them. But I also believe that even I have blind spots. It's hard to understand that I could have a blind spot, but I do have a couple of them. And so we give every client that we sign on two sessions with um, one of our certified date and relationship coaches. And that way, um, we have that support system outside of our words and our advice. They have somebody else who is also helping bolster them, helping be in their um, corner. And so I think anybody who has a therapy background, who knows that they have this soft spot for dating and relationship coaching, it's such a great arena to be in because um, we all need somebody to kind of say, chin up sometimes, or, you know, somebody to remind us, like, is that enough for you? That's the most powerful 
um, phrase I've ever heard from a therapist is, is it enough for you? And you know, I've worked with many therapists, and there's only one that ever said that. So whatever you're bringing to the table, um, I'm sure they all know this already, like you you have something special and a gift that nobody else has. So um, if you feel that calling toward like dating and relationship coaching, there are absolutely people who will benefit from you. So okay. And if somebody listening today is interested in maybe, you know, working with you or um, consulting with you, how would they, what's the best way for them to reach you? I will make sure you have all of my socials. Okay. Um, my personal is at the underscore MLR and my professional is at matched by MLR. And in both of those profiles, I have a link where if you're single, you click on it and you can make a free profile in our three day rule database. And that way you can consult with me you can consult with somebody else on the team, because I, I get it, I might not be everybody's cup of tea that blows my mind. But we have so <laughs> many incredible matchmakers, coaches. Um, and even if you're not interested in matchmaking, you can connect with me and we can, um, we can set you up with one of our coaches. So truly, if you're just kind of like standing on the edge of the diving board and you're like, I don't know, I don't know. And I need to get off the diving board. I'm not ready to dive into matchmaking waters, but I'm going to go sit on the corner and I'm going to dip my toes into coaching waters. We can do that too. Awesome. Okay. Well, I know you will not be disappointed if you get to hang out with Melissa. She's just so much fun. And oh, one more question. Do you help anybody, like anybody, yeah. any type of issue, religion, ethnicity, um, preferences, sexual preferences, like all of that, you help all everyone, anyone? Absolutely. Okay. So we do operate in most major metros. There are metros where, again, we are not going to take your money, sign on anything like that if we don't have a solid core database in your area. So you might get a message if you make a free profile that says we're not operating in your area yet. Um, that doesn't mean we won't be operating there. And that doesn't mean that we can't take a call and I can't, you know, fill in your profile and all of your notes. Um, but it does mean that as like a matchmaking client, I would say I simply don't have the resources in Amarillo right now, for example. Um, but we can always talk. We can set you up date coaching, anything like that. Okay. Yeah. So that would make sense. You have to be local to an area that you have a database. Obviously that would, mm -hmm. that would make sense. Okay. So you guys can find out if um, your area is supported by three day rule. So why is it called three day rule? It's from the old dating rule. Remember okay. like uh, the, from the book where it's like, if you like a girl yeah. and you take her out, you have to wait three days to call her again. Sadly, that is not possible now, like with social media and cell phones. Like if you wait three days, I think you've died. You've gone to heaven. You are now in my text message graveyard. Sayonara. You right. ruined my life. <laughs> <laughs> but, but way back in the day, there used yeah. to be a three day rule. Right. No, that's true. Before we had cell phones, because I was, you know, and when, gosh, I guess that's how I, when I first met my husband. Yeah, we didn't have cell phones. Well, we did, but we didn't, we weren't really using them. This was like 1999. So they were around, but we Right, they like were for like, I remember when somebody would send a text message in like the year 2000. I'm like, what is this thing? Yeah, <laughs> and it was like, remember, I'm like the, you know, the flip phone. It was like, you have to get to the- Yeah, yep. it was like, d -d 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 oh, it took forever. It took forever. And now it's so easy. It's so easy just to send something. So yeah, mm -hmm. I, I do. So I am kind of curious about like, what are the rules now? Like when it comes to this, like how, what is the recommend recommended time to text or not to text or call or not to call or. So here are some very basic rules that I give. Um, uh -huh. Number one rule, I think that is really important for me to remember is that I have to be myself, right? For better or worse, if I scare you off, it's because you're probably not strong enough to be with me, you know? <laughs> But also, I think um, as women, a lot of the times we get shy. So we think, okay, we have to wait until he texts us after the first date. Not true. I think like if you had a good time, when you get home, text and say, thank you so much. I had such a great time. I hope we can do it again. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Because men, um, you know, way back in the day, they might, I mean, I remember reading that book, He's Just Not That Into by Greg Barrett, mm -hmm. thinking like, because he says like he met Anna Smith and he like went to the phone book and he had to call like 25 or like 100 Anna Smiths to find the right one. Now, that is dramatic. I know plenty of men who would be like, I'm not 
I'm not doing that because that's really creepy. And obviously, like with the ad, not advent, but like with the um, the strides we've made forward in feminism, men don't want to offend a woman by coming on too strong or being too arrogant. So just remember that men really do carry a lot of burden in the dating world, um, especially when it comes to being the provider and those traditional roles. So you are allowed to text first and say, thank you so much. I had a great time. Right. <laughs> um, okay. So that is one rule. Also, and this, um, I might get flack for, but I think that there are a lot of women who will say like, he let me pay half for the first date. Okay, well, if you don't want to pay half, don't offer to pay half, you know, because if he wants to pay the bill and then you're like, oh no, let me do half of it. And he says, yes, then you're going to be upset with him. So you, you can fold your hands in your lap nicely and just be like, thank you so much for treating me to dinner tonight. This was so kind of you. I had such a great time. Like right in person, you can say that. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's like, don't offer to do something you don't want to do if it's going to put a damper on your connection, if that makes sense. Oh, makes total sense. I'm so glad that you are giving that suggestion and advice. I think that's really important. And yeah, it's hard to know nowadays, like if you're going to hurt somebody's feelings or you're going to offend them or, you know, you have to say and ask, ask for what you really want. You can't just, mm-hmm. you know, put these mixed messages out there or mixed signals. It's very confusing. So I love that. I love how you just said, you know, ask and do and say what you need or what you want, uh, at, you know, at the, at the forefront of, of what's going on. So I guess, okay, one more question and then I will let you go. I promise. So what happens if you, your, your feedback from one of the the daters is positive and the other daters is like, no, not a match. Are you breaking that news to your client or how does that, I'm just wondering what, like what that's like. I actually ask people on a one, like one-to-one basis, right. Mm -hmm. Where I will say, listen, you actually have the joy of having me break this information to the other person. Or would you feel more in integrity with yourself if you did it? And so I would always like somebody to be honest and be the one to break that news because um, it's, it's a hard lesson to learn or not even a hard lesson, but it's uncomfortable. And on the other side of an uncomfortable conversation is usually all the clarity we need. So I will fully support someone to utilize me and I can be that bearer of news, but I will also encourage them what feels most organic or like what feels like it's helping you more. Right. Having me do it or you doing it. <laughs> right. Yeah. And also too, that just gives a, I mean, I think that's wonderful that you ask that, that you give them that option that, you know, you can do it or or they can do it. And, you know, as adults, my hope would be that as, like you said, acting out of integrity and acting out of alignment or congruency is like, you know, I should be the one to do it. And, you know, I'm an adult now. I can, I don't yeah. have to get my mommy or my coach to do it for me. Totally, totally. Um, And once again, it's like, I'm your biggest cheerleader. So I will be in your corner and I will do that for you. But Mm -hmm. also um, a little discomfort won't hurt us. Right. No, we grow from it. You know, we, we grow from discomfort. Discomfort is something that is, it happens in our lives. And yeah, I mean, every day I'm going through something that I'm not, (laughs) wish somebody else can handle for me or, but I'm a grown up and I have to, you know, I have to do it myself. So I think that's, that's really great um, advice. All right. So I feel like I've gotten, I mean, I've learned so much and I really appreciate Good. your time. Is there anything else you want our listeners to know? You know what? I did just think of one piece of advice that I think, you know, anybody in your audience can really um, benefit from. And it doesn't have to just be dating, but I use the word integrity of like what you want. And so this reminds me of like a manifestation technique where, um, you know, it's, if I want to go to Dallas, right now I'm in El Paso. If I want to go to Dallas, I need to be traveling north. Okay. So if I'm not traveling north, that means I'm not getting any closer to my destination. So when it comes to dating, if you are accepting it, or if you're meeting someone and you're finding out, like, for example, my goal would be to find my person, my person that I can grow old with and just have the most amazing life and the most amazing connection, be my best friend, X, Y, Z. And if I am accepting a date with somebody who says, I don't really know what I want. I'm kind of just in it for having fun right now. And I'm like, well, you know what? I should just go on a date for the hell of it with this person. Am I traveling north? No, I'm going south. So anytime you're not going closer to your desired location, you are moving further away from it. So when it comes to dating, 
just remember, if you're saying yes to somebody who you're not sure about, that's okay. But why aren't you sure about them? Are you sure about them because they just told you they're not looking for the same thing as you? Then stop where you're at because you're moving further away from your goal point. But, you know, if you feel like saying yes to them would maybe help you get one step closer or even a step toward clarity, um, then say yes. Because that's the other thing is like discomfort brings clarity. Um, rejection brings clarity. Confusion is clarity wearing a different jacket. Right. So um, I just, that's my other piece of advice is take a look at the whole situation. And if there are any reasons or red flags telling you that this is not bringing you closer to your goal, then you need to say, thank you so much for your time. I just don't think our paths are aligned right now. And that's that. Beautiful. I love that. That's great. Okay. Well, I I do. I love that advice. And that's, um, you said so many wonderful things in there. I hope you guys (laughs) go back in 30 seconds and listen to it because I I really feel like that was such great (laughs) advice. Well, Melissa, thank you again so much for being here. This has just been awesome. I've learned, I've learned a ton and I know our listeners have also. I had so much fun chatting with you today, Lisa. It was so good to reconnect with you. And um, I can't wait to hopefully connect with your listeners and I'll keep listening myself. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks. Thank you. Please note that the therapy show with Lisa Mustard is for informational and entertainment purposes only and not a substitute for professional medical or mental health advice. Always consult with your therapist, doctor, or physician before implementing any suggestions from the show. The Therapy Show with Lisa Mustard is edited and engineered by Chelsea Weaver. If you're looking to start a podcast or ready to take the editing off of your plate, be sure to visit ChelseaWeaverPodcasting.com. Well, that wraps up another episode of The Therapy Show with Lisa Mustard. I know there are hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there, and I'm thankful you've chosen to listen to mine. Be sure to visit LisaMustard.com to access the show notes and discover more fantastic content. And I'd be grateful if you subscribe to the show. Thank you.